Hello and welcome back to Rev Endurance Sports and another edition of what is in our stand today. Today we're going to discuss um, something a little different than usual, but it is about what is in our stand today, which is a hashtag that you can follow and look for on um, social media and also um, I will try to do some blog posts as well for some more detailed things that sometimes either I forget to do during a video because a lot of times they are just um, without a script and basically just free flow of consciousness. Um, <laughs> being an older person, I have to use readers these days, but that's what that's uh, what that is. So. Uh, before we get any further, if you would please uh, subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to get the subscription up to a thousand subscribers. We're in the um, high 100s. I think we're just shy of like 190 subscribers. But, you know, because I look at the analytics, I know that a lot of people watch the videos. They just don't subscribe. So I would ask that if you do enjoy the content, you do get some benefit from it that you do subscribe and you hit that notification bell so that we can um, so you can be notified when I post a video. Um, you know, one of the things I'd like to do is continue to grow this channel because I'd like to be able to spend more time doing videos than um, than running uh, the business, whereas I'd like to push that off to someone else, a store manager of some sort, and then I could create more content um, and have more time to create more content, I guess is what I want to say. Okay, so anyway, uh, what we have here is a Diamondback recoil. And initially when I took on the project or I, I, I brought in the bike, I thought, you know what, I want to help this um, customer and I, I've given it some, some thought afterwards. Uh, the customer sent me a video clip of someone else who had done some upgrades to this bike. And that's why she came to me. She wanted to uh, do some upgrades, which included the rear shock and the fork. And she, the customer brought in the bike. I've got the parts in hand. Uh, she sourced them herself and brought them to me for installation. But after watching the video that she gave me as a, you know, someone else has done this job, here's, here's some info on it. The shock bushings need to be modified. They need to be filed down, belt grinder, sander, whatever. And personally, I don't like to do that. I don't like to take stock components, especially brand new components, sealed, still in a bag, brand new component, and then modify them. Um, mainly because, number one, I don't like jerry-rigging things. I don't like to do that on my own personal bikes. But as a business liability, I don't like to do that either. Additionally, that component that you modify or do whatever, take a belt sander to it, that voids the warranty. So now the customer will no longer have a warranty on that shock. So that's one thing. The fork, I haven't even looked at because that first situation with the shock, that was a deal breaker for me. But the other thing is that as a professional bike fitter for nearly two decades, um, I people pay me handsomely to either build them a custom bike, that means you know titanium or steel or even carbon, because there are some carbon manufacturers, a custom bike, and not just the build, as in the components, the handlebar stems, that kind of thing. No, the actual tubes what length the tube should be, what possibly the head tube should be taller, or any number of variations in that frame geometry. People pay me to 
create a custom geometry and then send it off to one of my bike builders, which could be, you know, Alchemy or Tomasini or, or anyone that still creates custom bikes for my customers. Additionally, so that is the bike sizing, bike fit side of things. But additionally, once either someone already owns a bike or when that bike comes in, the custom one that we just got done, I also do the bike fit for them. So that's, let's say we need to dial in the stem, the stem angle, stem length, saddle height, all these things that are associated with bike fit, uh, of course, cleats and cleat position and all that. So this customer is five foot, barely five foot one. This is a medium 29er. And it's just the wrong size bike for her. So one of the things that is difficult for me is to go through, do all these modifications on a bike that in my opinion is the wrong size for her. And I should state in my professional opinion is too small for her. So there's that as well. So not the right size bike, probably not the right wheel format for someone who's barely five foot one. A 29er, maybe a 27.5 might have been a better option uh, for this customer. So 27.5 wheel format would just bring the bike much, uh, much more manageable in my opinion. Also, the, the, the fact that it's a size medium. So that is also too large of a bike in my opinion. So we've got the shock that needs to be modified. This bike is not the right size. I, I just, I wanna walk away from this project just because everything in my being and everything that I represent for my brand and my customers is integrity as far as what jobs I take and how I do them and the other, of course, is I don't like to do things that is a compromise in one way or the other. So as a business, I generally, I generally walk away from things right away. Well, some things I do pretty quickly. You, I can just see it. But this one I thought, well, let me, let me get a chance to at least dig a little deeper let me see this video that that she's recommended to me but after watching the video watching the modifications also the components are of a lower end and quality as well so then i'm like so we're putting all this time effort money not to mention the time spent there's a lot of times on the service side of things that you're just not going to make the money back. So while it may take you an hour or two to install these two components and the going rate is probably only 30 to $50 to install a shock and maybe $30 to install a fork, you're just not going to make the money back. Labor rates here are $99 an hour, and that's basically because we're in Southern California and it's, it's a comparable rate to everyone else all the other bike shops. So if you're in a smaller town and other places where economy, um, you know, rent and things like that, cost of living basically is a little bit more affordable, your shop rate may be a lot less. So anyway, that's, that's the story on this Diamondback recoil. This is why I'm going to walk away from the job and you know, I'm, I I don't need the headaches of once I put this together and then the customer rides it and then it's not riding right or the bushings have an issue or, you know, I shave them too much or shave them too little. It's, it's just too much, um, too many variables and it's not a plug and play type of scenario. So I like to do things that are compatible, that are 
suggested either by the manufacturer or already on that bike by the manufacturer. So anyway, just thought I'd let you know a little bit more about what I do here at the shop and the jobs that I walk away from and why I walk away from them. So I'm on other social media platforms such as Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook as well. I'm on Strava so you folks can follow me on Strava and see what we do. And uh, we, um, we generally go out on Saturdays for about 10,000 feet of climbing and Tuesdays about 5,000 feet, although depending on the weather, I may get out a little earlier before the actual group ride. And, um, and I also have a, a blog. So I'll start putting all that in the description. And uh, once again, please like, subscribe, share, hit that notification bell. I'd like to get the subscriber rate up to a thousand subscribers and uh, spend more time talking to you. Also, you know, I'm available for personal consultations and or uh, recommendations and things. So leave a comment below or hit me up on the email. All right. Thank you so much. And we'll see you at the next one.